What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, October 21st, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio. Dot com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Marvel fans got a first real glimpse of Hugh Jackman as an age Wolverine on Thursday. The Wolverine sequel, Logan, released a trailer featuring the 48-year-old actor as Old Man Logan. The preview set to Johnny Cash's cover of Her sees Logan, a.k.a. Wolverine, and an elderly Charles Xavier, play, played by Patrick Stewart, a.k.a. Professor X, discover an extraordinary young mutant, played by Daphne King. The pair must protect the girl from Donald Pierce, played by Boyd Holdbrook, and his Reavers. Logan is based on the Mark Millar comic series, Wolverine Old Man Logan. Director James Mangold shared a page from the film's script this month that suggests that Wolverine may not survive in the movie. The notes on the page read, In this flick, people will get hurt or killed when something falls on them. This will get just as, they will get just as hurt or just as killed as if they get hit with something big and heavy like, say, a car. As for our hero, well, he's older now and it's clear his abilities aren't what they once were. He's fading on the inside and his diminished healing factor keeps him in a constant state of chronic pain. So by all means, go ahead and worry about him. Mangold had tweeted a photo of Jackman as an aged Wolverine on Wednesday. The actor confirmed in 2015 that Wolverine 3 will mark his final appearance as Logan. British actor Tom Hiddleston has joined the cast of Nick Park's new prehistoric animated comedy, Early Man. He will lend his voice to the character of the ridiculous pompous Lord Nooft. The film will also include the voice talents of Eddie Redmay, who will play the hero, Doug. Park said in a statement Thursday, Tom is a wonderful actor and it's so thrilling to see he bring out his comic villain to life with his amazing talent, energy, and enthusiasm. It is a, a great privilege to work with Tom, and I'm so excited to see his character, Lord Nooth, emerge on the scene. Ilson added, I've been a fan of Nick Park and Arder Man for as long as I can remember, and I am incredibly honored to be working with Nick and the team on this adventure. I'm thrilled to be able to breathe some semblance of life into this historical villain and to work with Eddie for the first time. Early Man made me laugh out out loud when I read, Lord Nooth is larger than life in every aspect. I can't wait to, for audiences to meet him. The Arrow Man and Studio Canal film is currently in production in Bristol. Hillson is best known for his work in the Thor and Avenger movies, as well as the TV miniseries The Night Manager. Warner Brothers and Harry Potter producer David Hyman are teaming up with the Ronald Dahl estate on a reboot of the classic film Willy Wonka. Hyman and Michael Siegel, the manager of Dahl's estate, will produce the film, which will focus on the story of Wonka himself. A source close to the film says most films are possible if the first one is successful, including revisiting some of the characters made popular in a 1971 movie starring Gene Wilder. Warner Brothers also put out another adaptation in 2005, which starred Johnny Depp as Wonka, and was directed by Tim Burton and is currently working on a stage version which is set to open on Broadway in April 2017. The original source, Dahl's book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, was published in 1964. Ten actresses are reportedly being considered for the role of Domino, the mutant mercenary who teams up with Deadpool in the film's upcoming sequel. Director Tim Miller has begun testing for the role with nearly a dozen actresses to choose from. Lizzie Kaplan, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Sienna Miller, Sophia Batella, Stephanie Sigmund, Sylvia Hoax, Kelly Rollbach, Eve Hewson, Mackenzie Davis, and Ruby Rose are all in the running for the film's female lead. Domino, whose real name is Nia Thurman, is best known for her time in the X-Force, the offshoot of branch of the X-Men. The film, which doesn't have a release date, is to the follow-up to the 2016 blockbuster starring Ryan Reynolds as the foul-mouthed anti-hero Deadpool. Deadpool earned more than, the, more than $780 million, making it the highest-grossing R-rated film of all time. The Independent Filmmaker Project has announced the nomination for the 26th annual IFP Gotham Independent Film Awards. Gotham Awards ceremony is to take place November 28th at Caprini Wall Street in Manhattan. Gotham Award tributes will be presented then to act actors Amy Adams and Ethan Hawke, director Oliver Stone, and industry tribute recipient producer Arnold Mil Milchan. 
For Best Feature, the nominees include Certain Women, Everybody Wants Some, Manchester by the Sea, Moonlight, and Patterson. For Best Documentary, the nominees include Camera Person, I Am Not Your Negro, OJ Made in America, Tower, and Wiener. For Best Actor, the nominees include Casey Affleck in Manchester by the Sea, Jeff Bridges in Hell or High Water, Adam Driver in Patterson, Joel Edgerton in Loving, and Craig Robinson in Morris from America. For Best Actors, the nominees include Kate Beckinsale in Love and Friendship, and that Benning in 20th Century Women, Isabel Hoopert in Ellie, Ruth Nega in Loving, and Natalie Portman in Jackie. For Breakthrough Actor, the nominees include Lily Gladstone in Certain Women, Lucas Hedges in Manchester by the Sea, Royalty Hightower in The Fits, Shasha Lane in American Honey, and Anya Taylor-Joy in The Witch. Joanne Vicente, the executive director of IFP and the Made in, in New York Media Center, said in a statement, wish to offer our heartly congratulations to the 2016 Gotham Award nominees, all of whose unique and exciting artistic achievements represent the very best in independent storytelling. Former Walking Dead star Lori Holden has signed on to join the cast of The Americans for Season 5. According to TV Line, Holden will be featured in a recurring role on the FX drama as Renee, a love interest for star Nora Emmerich's character Stan Beeman. Renee and Beeman are set to come together after she catches the FBI agent's attention at the gym. Holden has kept busy following her character Andrea's demise on The Walking Dead during Season 3, having guest starred on shows such as Major Crimes and Chicago Fire. She also appeared in the comedy sequel Dumb and Dumber 2. Season 5 of The Americans, which has already started production, will be the second to last season before the series ends with Season 6. Uh, showrunners Joel Weisberg and Joel Fields said about entering into the final two seasons, it's hard to believe we're heading into the final stretch of The Americans, and we're so grateful to know we'll be telling the story to its conclusion. The Americans will return in early 2017. Christopher Lloyd has joined the Season 3 Ensemble of Sci-Fi's 12 Monkeys. The Cable Network tweeted Thursday, Great Scott, welcome Christopher Lloyd to the Army of the Hashtag 12 Monkeys. See you next season. No details regarding his character or when he will appear were immediately revealed. The time-traveling series stars Aaron Stanford, Amanda Schultz, and Emily Hampshire. Lloyd is best known for his role in the Back to the Future and Adams Family franchise, as well as the TV sitcom Taxi. Leslie Jones pleaded with Tom Hanks to tell her what outer space is like in the promo for this week's episode of Saturday Night Live, which Hanks is hosting. Though Hanks tried to explain that he was never actually in outer space, Jones was persistent. Hanks responded cold, to which Jones said, I knew it. In another skit, Jones asked Hank if among many of his accomplishments ever been in love. He replied, yeah, I've been married 28 years. Jones said, that was not the question, Tom Hanks. Uh, she appeal, applied a fresh layer of lipstick. Saturday will mark the 10th time Hanks has hosted the sketch show. This week he will be joined by musical guest Lady Gaga. And in a related story, though it's been a viral hit since the new season of Saturday Night Live debuted, one person is not impressed by Alec Baldwin's impression of Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. That would be Baldwin's brother, Stephen. The younger Baldwin is a conservative who supports Trump and was in attendance at Wednesday's final debate. He told CBS News afterwards he doesn't think his brother's impression of Trump is particularly humorous. He says he's got the voice down very well. I think it's getting a little too nasty right now. I don't want to be a party pooper here, but I don't think it's very funny. The skits ha that have scored Trump as a pursuit lift buffoon have led the show in each of the first three weeks. Cast member Kate McKinnon has portrayed a robotic Clinton overjoyed by Trump's misfortunes. Trump himself weighed in on the skits on Twitter, calling the show boring and unfunny and a hit job on me. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton sent social media into a frenzy with her white pants suits at the final presidential debate Wednesday in Las Vegas. The 68-year-old Democrat presidential candidate drew comparisons to scandal character Olivia Pope with the Ralph Lauren outfit at her third debate with Republican candidate Donald Trump. One supporter tweeted at Hillary Clinton and serving some Olivia Pope white hat realness in her ivory power suit and i'm here for it hashtag debate night hashtag gladiator another person wrote yes at hillary clinton pulled out the olivia pope white her final hashtag debate night you know what that means this election is hashtag handy the white suit concluded a trio of red white and blue looks for clinton she wore a red pantsuit to the first debate September 26 in Hampstead, New York, and a navy blue to the second on October 8th in St. Louis, Missouri, both also designed by Ralph Lauren. 
Fashion critics and fans have dubbed Lauren the candidate's dress-in-chief on social media. Clinton also wore a white Ralph Lauren pantsuit to accept her party's nomination at the Democratic National Convention in July. Rap legend Eminem slammed Donald Trump and Trump supporters in a new 8-minute song campaign speech, which the rapper released Wednesday with the promise of a new album. Eminem tweeted along with the links to the new track, Don't Worry, I'm Working on an, an Album. Here's something meanwhile. In the explainative lace song, Slim Shady references everything from Colin Kaepernick to Trayvon Martin to Stacey Dash while making it clear what he thinks of the Republican presidential candidate. The song has drawn criticism from David Duke, the former imperial wizard of the Ku Klux Klan who claims Eminem has been poisoning the minds of our youths. The upcoming still untitled album would be Eminem's Knife. His first commercially successful record, the Slim Shady LP, was released in 1999. Selma Blair, a guest on the talk, explained her outburst aboard a Delta flight in June, which resulted in the actress being removed from the flight. Blair said of the incident, I had a total psychotic blackout, which occurred after she mixed wine and medication. Uh, the Mother and Daughters actress explained, I am someone who should never drink, and I rarely do, and I don't anymore, but I did. I had a glass of wine, someone gave me a pill that I thought was something that I had taken before, which I don't take on a regular basis, a very bad choice, and I had a total psychotic blackout. Co-host Sharon Osbourne, who recently detailed her own breakdown, sympathized with Blair. Osbourne said, it must have been very terrifying. Blair responded, it was terrifying, I felt horrible. She added, I totally own it, it will not happen again. Longtime couple Eva Murray and Cal Martino welcome baby number two on Wednesday. The 31-year-old actress, the daughter of Susan Sarandon, announced in her newsletter that she gave birth to son Major James at home. She and Martino, uh, 35, a retired soccer player, are already parents to two-year-old daughter Marlo. Uh, Murray wrote, It is with so much gratitude and joy that Kyle, Marlo, and I announced the arrival of our sweet boy. Uh, she added, born safely and swiftly at home today, October 19th at 1.44 p.m., 8 pounds, 3 ounces, and 22 inches long. Our hearts are bursting. Our family is complete. Thank you so much for all your love and support. Amori and Martino married in 2011 after a 13-month engagement and welcomed their daughter in August 2014. Actress who had a miscarriage in 2015 revealed she was expecting again in April. She said, at the time, Kyle and I can't wait to watch what a funny and loving big sister Marla will be, and we're cherished our last month's with her as a soul center of our universe. The star also added, I think I've conceived myself that my particular baby factor only produced children of the female variety. Well, it turns out that the universe was pushing for a little man to join our mix, and we're all just so excited. Amori is the daughter of director Franco Mori and actress Susan Sarandon. She last starred with her mom in the movies Mothers and Daughters, which opens in theaters in May. Caitlyn Jenner welcomed her fourth grandchild this week. The 66-year-old television personality's eldest daughter, Cassandra, gave birth to her first son with husband Mark Marino in, on Tuesday. Marino wrote in a since-deleted Instagram post he made it one day before his due date on Mike's dad's birthday, 8 pounds, 13 ounces, 22 inches long. I'm elated and exhausted, but I'm a super happy non-pregnant mama. Cassandra Marino and her husband are already parents to daughters Isabella and Francesca. Her half-brother Brandon Jenner is dad to the daughter Eva James with his wife and fellow Brandon and Leah singer Leah Felder. Jenner shared Marino and her brother Burt Jenner with his first wife Christy Conover and also dad to Brandon, Brody, Kendall, and Kylie. Marino told People this month that her relationship with Jenner has improved since the star came out as a transgender in 2015. She revealed, my relationship with Kaylin is much better than with Bruce, but we still have a, lot, have a lot of work to do. We didn't talk for years, and now we see each other every couple of weeks and talk on the phone, which I'm grateful for. Marino added, she's happier, more appreciative of her family. She is trying harder and there is a softness to Caitlin that is new to me. I think part of that is that when someone is happier, they're just nicer. Broadway couple Audra McDonald and Will Swenson are proud parents to a baby girl. The 46-year-old actress announced in a tweet Thursday that she and Swenson welcomed daughter Sally James the night previous. She wrote, at the Will Swenson and I are joined to welcome Sally James McDonald Swenson, born last night at 11.16 p.m. Our hearts are bursting. McDonald's already mom to daughter Zoe with ex-husband Peter Donovan, while Swenson shares sons Bridger and Sayer with ex-wife Amy Westerby. The couple married in 2012 and announced they were expecting in May. Uh, she joked at the time who knew that tap dancing during pre-menopause could lead to pregnancies. At the Will Swenson and I are completely surprised but elated 
uh, to be expected. McDonald is known for playing Dr. Naomi Bennett on private practice and has starred in Broadway productions of Raising in the Sun, Car- uh, Carousel, and Porgy and Bess. So I said has appeared in Hair, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and Lam Meserobs on Broadway. Shailene Woodley pleaded not guilty to charges of criminal trespass and engaging in a riot following her arrest at the Dakota Access Pipeline protest site. Woodley was arrested on October 10th during a peaceful protest against the construction of the oil pipeline in North Dakota. The actress did not attend Wednesday's hearing and her plea was entered by her attorney, Alan Rekasher. Uh, Woodley's case would go to trial where she faced the two misdemeanor charges. Revolver Entertainment has acquired a Cara de Levenger documentary. The Cara project will explore the 24-year-old English star's transition from model to actress, according to Variety. Revolver will shop the film at MIPCOP, which ends Thursday, and American Film Market in November. The company intends to release the movie on DVD and VOD in the United States and in Canada in the next few months. Levenger modeled for such brands as Chanel and Blueberry before turning her focus to acting. She made her film and debut in 2012's movie Anna Karina, and since starred in Paper Towns, Pans, and Suicide Squad. The star said of modeling in an interview with the Wall Street Journal in 2015, I ended up feeling a little bit empty. Fashion is all about what's on the outside, and that's it. There's no searching. It's just creating pretty things. She also added, I don't want to be that cliche model slash actress. Basically gave up on acting because trying to get an agent was impossible. Everyone said, you're just a model. Eleven J will next star in London Fields with Jamie Alexander and Amber Heard. She's also slated for Tulip Fever with Alicia Van Kander and Valerians and the Cities of a Thousand Planets with Dane DeHaan. Tom Cruise paid homage to some of his most iconic roles Wednesday alongside James Corden on The Late Late Show. Corden asked Cruz, are you ready to do this, who was on hand to promote his latest film, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. The actor replied, no, I'm not ready, but I'll do it, before the, big, the duo began to act out famous scenes from throughout Cruz's story career, starring with Top Gun. I feel the need, the need for speed, Corden and Cruz said together while wearing bomber jackets. The pair then switched between scenes from Days of Thunder, Rain Man, Tropic Thunder, War of the Worlds, and Minority Report before hitting all five of Cruz's Mission Impossible films that ended with Cruz hanging off the side of a plane, as seen in the fifth installment. Nobody, when Cruz and Corden reached Jerry Maguire, the late night host, was quickly repra- replaced by Cuba Gooding Jr. to reprise his 1997 Oscar winning role and declared, Show Me the Money. The trip down memory lane then concluded with the performance of Cruz's iconic dance scene from Risky Business. Jack Reacher Never Go Back hit Cedars October 21st. After nearly 20 years together, Vanilla Ice's wife, Laura Van Winkle, has filed for divorce from the rapper-turned-construction mogul. According to TMZ, Laura filed the official paperwork on Tuesday in Florida, though the couple has reportedly been separated for a few weeks. Vanilla Ice's real name is Rob Van Winkle, and Laura were married in 1997 and have two daughters together, Dusty Rain, 18, and Kylie Breeze, 16. Vanilla Ice was recently eliminated from the season's Dancing with the Stars in the show's fourth week of competition. Lady Gaga and producer Mark Ronson have responded on the social media to Patrick Carney of the Black Keys' critique of their song, Perfect Illusion. Carney said of the track Wednesday on HBO's Vice News Tonight during a segment entitled Patrick Carney's High Standard Music's Corner. First of all, I hate guitars that sound like that, where the drummer listened to new songs for the first time and offered his take. Uh, he said, I'm lost because the guitar at the top of it sounds so messed up. It's like Eye of the Tiger, but nearly not even not nearly as good as that. It sounds like Hulk Hogan is playing the freaking guitar. He continues about Perfect Illusion that features Queen of the Stone Age frontman Josh Holm on guitar and Tame Impala's Kevin Parker. Ronson, who produced the song, took to Twitter and responded noting that how Carney in the past has written off his 2014 smash hit featuring Bruno Mars' Uptown Funk. Ronson wrote, I also remember my good friend at Patrick Carney sitting in my living room hearing Uptown Funk and telling me it wouldn't work. Soon afterwards, Gaga replied to Ronson, tweeting, uh, writing, he is not as snarkly as I would be watching him in a guitar death match with Kevin Parker and Josh Holm. Gaga released Perfect Illusion in September with being her first solo song in three years. The singer is set to appear on her fifth studio album, Joanne. And a passing to report, Phil Chess, who co-founded the influential recording label Chess Records with his brother Leonard, has died at the age of 95. Phil died Tuesday at his ranch in Tucson, Arizona, according to his daughter Pam, who confirmed the news to the Chicago Sun-Times. 
exact cause of death was not revealed. Label Head, along with his brother, is said to have pioneered rock and roll music in the 50s with the release of what some consider to be the first rock record, Rocket 88 by artist Jackie Branson and his Delta Cats, which included a younger Ike Turner. The Chess Brothers is also known for signing legendary acts for, to their label, including Willie Dixon, Muddy Waters, Helen Wolf, Bo Diddley, Chuck Berry, Sonny Boy Williamson, Etta James, John Lee Hooker, Elmore James, and Buddy Guy. The duo is also known for producing some of their artists' songs. The Chess Brothers' story inspired the 2008 music drama Cadillac Records, which starred Adrian Brody as Leonard and Beyonce as Etta James. Leonard died in 1972, and shortly after, Phil retired from the music industry after scoring the label's first Hot 100 number one single with Chuck Berry's My ding a Ling. The brothers were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987 and the Blues Hall of Fame in 1995. Phil was also survived by his son Kevin, four grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. Pearl Jam has a few drummers in their 25 years of existence, but the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame recognized just two in its nomination of the band for induction this year, which has left at least one of the other unhappy he got uh, others unhappy he got snubbed. David Bruze, who was with Pearl Jam from 1991 to 1994, reacted with disappointment that he was left out of the nomination, posting on his Facebook page Wednesday that he expected the band to do the right thing. Bruze was Pearl Jam's third drummer. Original drummer Dave Crusen, who played on the band's debut album 10, was replaced by Matt Chamberlain for a short period before Bruze joined. Bruze said in early on Wednesday morning on his Facebook page, if there is still a part of that band that remembers how hard we worked, how much blood, how much sweat, they will do the right thing. He toured with Pearl Jam for the massively successful 10, and it was in the band for the recording and touring cycles for its second and third album, 1993's Verses and 1994 Vitalogy. The three albums established the band as one of the biggest bands in the world and remain among the most popular to its fan base. A Bruze was replaced in 1994 with former Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer Jack Irons during the tour of Vitalogy, but says his short stint with the band should not be ignored by the band or the hall. Bruze posted later Wednesday morning, the 23rd anniversary of the release of Verses. The members of Pearl Jam have got to know what's the right thing to do. They can't justify by ignoring my contributions, like me or not. Despite Bruze's role in the recording of Pearl Jam's massive second and third albums, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame mentioned only Crewson and current drummer Matt Cameron, who joined in 1998 and is also the drummer for Soundgarden in nomination and its biography of the band. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1988, Mystic Pizza, a romantic comedy starring Julia Roberts, Anna Beth Gish, and Lily Taylor as three young women who work in a pizza parlor in Mystic, Connecticut, opens in theaters. The then unknown Roberts played Daisy Arujo, a feisty wild child waitress from a working class family of Portuguese descent who gets swept off her feet by a rich young man. Mystic Pizza also featured Vincent D'Onofrio, Adam Stork, and William R. Moses. Matt Damon made his big screen debut in the film as Steamer, the younger brother of Daisy's wealthy suitor played by Stork. Less than two years after Mystic Pizza was released, Roberts would skyrocket to international fame when she appeared in the 1990 blockbuster Pretty Women. Roberts, who was born on October 28, 1967 in Smyrna, Georgia, made her Silver screen debut in 1988 girl band movie Satisfaction with just Justine Bateman and Liam Neeson. She received a Best Supporting Actress Oscar nomination for her role as a young Southern woman afflicted with serious health problems in the 1989 tear uh, jerker Steel Magnolias, which co-starred Sally Field, Shirley MacLaine, Dolly Parton, Olympia Dukakis, and Daryl Hannah. Roberts' performance as the hooker with the Heart of Gold Vivi Award and Pretty Woman propelled her to superstardom and earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. The film, directed by Gary Marshall and co-starring Richard Gere, was an enormous box office success. Roberts, who became known for her huge smile and willy girl-next-door beauty, went on to appear in a long list of films in the 1990s, including Sleeping with the Enemy in 1991, Dying Young in 1991, The Pelican Brief in 1993 with Denzel Washington, My Best Friend's Wedding in 1997, with Cameron Diaz, Dermot Marooney, and Rupert Everett, Notting Hill in 1999 with Hugh Grant, and Runaway Bride in 1999, which paired her again with Gear. In between her hits came such commercial flops as I Love Trouble in 1994 and Mary Riley in 1996. 
Roberts collected a Best Actress Academy Award for her performance in the title role of 2000's Aaron Brockovich, which is based on the true story of a single mother who takes on a giant power company that has poisoned one town's water supply. Roberts played the sole lead female character in the hit caper film Ocean's Eleven in 2001 and its sequel Ocean's Twelve in 2004. And that is your entertainment report for Friday, October 21st, 2016. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great weekend. Good night, and God bless you all.